Beautiful. So welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Sargent, hosting uh, another episode of Ask the Doc. And we've got um, three awesome clinicians with us today. Really excited about this panel. And, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about um, why traditional physical therapy doesn't work. And uh, you may have seen that title and said, what do you mean PT doesn't work? Um, well, you know, it, it certainly can work and a lot of times it doesn't. And so, um, you know, uh, performance rehabilitation, regenerative medicine often has patients show up on the doorstep that have tried PT, have tried chiropractic, have tried occupational therapy, have tried pain management injections and are still experiencing pain. So why is that? And that's kind of what we're going to touch on today. And these three clinicians uh, with us today have a, a lot of experience with that and encounter uh, both these patients that have failed uh, traditional conservative methods of care um, and also have experienced tremendous success in uh, a, quite a unique approach uh, where they uh, lock arms together with other clinicians from uh, other specialties, other disciplines, and um, are able to get patients better faster. So uh, let me quickly introduce them. Um, Dr. Anthony Pacillo is a chief clinical officer at Performance Rehab and um, uh, is, uh, basically supports many of the clinicians and our clinic directors in um, you know, providing care uh, in a way that is both highly collaborative and at the same time uh, seamless and streamlined. Um, it's, it's both unique and challenging, but works very well. Uh, so thanks for being with us, Dr. Pacillo. Uh, Dr. Gazzardi is uh, a, a doctor of physical therapy. So when he saw this particular title, he, he was like, what are you talking about? PT doesn't work. I've been doing this for a, a decade and uh, of course it works. Um, so uh, Joe, thanks for being with us. Um, Joe is a, um, a director, um, really oversees a team of uh, PTs and, and, and OTs and chiros working together. And then um, uh, Dr. Ramirez, Jess, uh, Jessica Ramirez is an OT who, um, you know, occupational therapy, again, another unique um, uh, method and approach to, to care that has been fully integrated in the performance model. So excited to hear kind of her perspective, um, you know, as how that, how that rehab approach really works. So I'm going to start, uh, we'll kick it off with Dr. Pacillo and um, Anthony, tell us a little bit about, you know, this collaborative approach and, and, and maybe even, um, you know, what it was born out of and, and the types of patients we see that maybe have failed traditional physical therapy and, and maybe why that is. Sure, sure. And, you know, you, you did touch on it in your, in your introduction and it, it was hard not to, not to chuckle to myself when you're describing the patient that comes into us. Mm -hmm. it, it is beyond common for us to hear a patient come in complaining of whether it be chronic shoulder pain, chronic hip pain, lower back pain, and when inquiring as to what they've done uh, for it over the years or what doctors they've seen, most often patients will say, oh, I've done physical therapy. It, it didn't work. Please don't recommend that because I'm not going to do it again. And we, we hear this over and over and over again. And it, as, when I was early on, into my, early on into my career, I kind of just took that as what it was and said, okay, we're not going to do physical therapy moving forward. It wasn't until I started to really pry and inquire what they meant by physical therapy or really started to investigate what was actually being done. So a habit I've gotten into now is I'll ask patients uh, if they've, instead of asking patients if they've had physical therapy, I'll describe what physical therapy is supposed to be or what rehab is supposed to be and ask them if they've had that. And nearly 100% of the time, patients will either interrupt me and say, no, I've definitely never had that. No need to keep describing it. Uh, or just by the end of my, my description, they say, no, I haven't had that. And typically what I'll, what I'll describe is I'll say, were, were your doctors, were you spending anywhere from 20 to 30 and even 40 minutes at times one-on-one -on -one with, with your doctor, where that provider, that clinician was using their hands, they were touching you, they were relaxing certain muscles, they were moving certain joints, and they were working you through certain, certain motions. Uh, they weren't simply just putting a stim pad on your back or a heat pack on your on your shoulder. And most often the response I get is is no, I was with my I was with the doctor anywhere from 
five minutes to 10 minutes at, at best. And that time was often spent hooking me up to some type of machine. Uh, I'll then continue on to say, where did you then spend an additional 40 to 60 minutes uh, performing therapeutic exer exercise that was supervised by a technician of, of sorts, whether that's a physical therapy aid, uh, a rehab technician, but it, it was the, your exercises, your therapeutic activities were supervised. There was tactile cues, there were verbal cues, it was engaging, people were correcting what you were doing and modifying where, wherever was most appropriate. And most often what we'll hear is, uh, no, I, I was given a piece of paper with eight to 10 exercises on it. I was told to go do them and that they would see me at the, at the end. And really, uh, after spending the last, uh, what, better half of a, a decade listening to these stories, you find out a lot of people just do some really, really, really boring personal training, <laughs> which is what it sounded like. It's uh, when, you, when you find that physical therapy is being delivered the right way, the doctor's spending 20 to 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one with their patients, their exercises, their activities are, are supervised their home care regimens are updated regularly. Uh, and there's checkpoints along the way to make sure everything's going the way we would like it to. It, it's very rare to hear that physical therapy didn't work or, or didn't achieve what we were looking for it to, uh, what we were looking for it to achieve. Yeah, that's well said, man. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, just perspective. It's pretty, pretty comprehensive. And, you know, I know as a part of sort of that initial consult phase, it sounds like you, you have a lot of those conversations with new patients when they come in because a lot have tried, right? And, and are kind of come in skeptical saying like, why, why, why should I even think that this would work? Didn't I already try this? And understanding what some of the differences are. Um, Dr. Gazzardi, uh, let, let's talk to you a little bit. I mean, as a PT, right? And, and, and having been in a number of different settings, um, and, and environments over the last decade. Um, give us your perspective a little bit on this and, and um, you know, and, and maybe, you know, what's different about how you treat today? Sure. So, you know, ironically enough, I had a patient today who was referred in um, from someone who came, had come to us for an orthopedic complaint. And she, quote unquote, described this to her friend who she referred in saying that we're just different. Um, so it was funny how, as I begin to unpack that, how, how that happened. And a lot of it was what Dr. Pachilla was describing of being set up on a bike or some machine and so forth, and not a whole lot, um, after that or with that. So un unfortunately, um, you know, that was the case here. And, you know, it seems like she's very pleased, uh, just two sessions into being treated here at performance. Um, my, my take on it is, is, is twofold. So the first of which is we have several clinicians and doctors working towards one game plan that will effectively get this person where they want to be. Um, and that is so crucial um, because outside of offices like ours, um, oftentimes it's one, two, three, four different game plans from possibly four different providers from different offices, whether it's their primary doctor, their orthopedic doctor, and now they're coming to the physical therapy clinic to try and carry out a plan of a diagnosis that's already been giving that's typically fairly generalized, like low back pain. Mm -hmm. And then we're kind of there to sort out the mess while this person's getting input from three or four different providers. And that can be very challenging and limit the ability for someone to really improve and get where they like to be. Um, the other uh, thing I'd like to add is whenever you have just one discipline attacking something or one strategy of attacking something, your ceiling is, is limited and you're only going to go so fast to that particular place, right? So here at, at Performance, we have multiple clinicians that are oftentimes working with a particular patient not only do you get from point A to point B faster, that velocity is, is multiple, you know, times multiple factors, but your ceiling now increases exponentially as well in terms of how much better someone can improve. So, you know, as an example, let's say someone who enjoyed playing tennis may go the traditional route and now they're only able to play for a short period of time. They're still experiencing knee pain. It's tolerable, but they're playing, but it's not great. And maybe they're only playing one time a week. Oftentimes we get this person and we get them most of the time completely out of pain. We're modifying their programs, but we're also getting them to a pain-free 
you know, functional level where they're doing what they love three, four, five days out of the week. And that's just a much higher ceiling than going the quote unquote traditional route. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's a lot there. Um, lot, lots to unpack. Um, you spoke about, you know, some of the actually uncovered kind of some of the frustrations that I think patients don't realize there's an alternative to, right? They, they, they don't, most people probably don't realize there's an alternative to going to five different offices to see five different, you know, specialties or, or clinicians with different backgrounds um, who typically are not communicating, not collaborating, right? And, and, and so, and oftentimes it's not simultaneous. It's trying this, that doesn't work. Then we go try this, that doesn't work. We go try this. And so um, it, it really is a very, fragmented approach to care that is really common, right? I mean, that that's kind of the traditional model, um, unfortunately. And so I imagine, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I imagine the complexity or simplicity of the condition has a lot to do as well as to whether or not that patient gets any relief and gets better. I imagine that, you know, in the traditional approach, um, maybe a PT only clinic is appropriate for a kind of a simple sprain or strain um, and, and can kind of get some improvement, right? But whereas maybe a, a chronic condition or even a, you know, even an acute condition that is maybe more complex, it, you know, probably won't work, right? Or maybe get some relief, but it's gonna, it, it won't be long before it returns. Is there any, you know, truth to, to what I'm saying here? Uh, in, entirely accurate. <laughs> that would be the best way of putting it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Ramirez, let, let's let's get to you now. So, occupational therapy. I mean, I'm confused. Don't you know? Aren't they? You and everyone else. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, how does that play into this whole thing? I mean, I you know, don't you just like work on hands? Yeah. Uh, um, you know. So, talk to us. I mean, you've been um, you know you've been an OT for how long? About five years now. Five years. So, you know, in the last five years, you two have been in, in different environments. Tell us what you've seen and what your experience has been, and then maybe even just touch on, um, you know, your role on that rehab team at, at Performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I think for me, uh, very early on, if I can remember correctly, like the very first day of treating as a licensed therapist, uh, one of the things that my patients kept saying to me was, you explain a lot. You know, I didn't know any of this stuff. I went to my doctor and um, I had a surgery done or I need to have a surgery done. And they didn't explain any of this to me. So thank you for explaining all of this. So I realized very early on that there was a huge educational component to patients care that was dramatically missing. Um, so I decided very early on that that was going to be part of the way that I treated. Um, I think it's super important for patients to understand not only what their condition is, why they're presenting the way that they're presenting, but also why we're doing what we're doing and why we're approaching that condition or that injury or that illness that way. Um, I also find that patients are more engaged in their treatment and they're more um, invested in their care when they have a good understanding of what's going on. Um, so I think that typically when we don't see that it's physical therapy and or rehab in general isn't working, uh, that can sometimes be the simple missing link there. Um, and, you know, a lot of doctors, a lot of surgeons, they don't. Um, you know, we see where they do only spend five, 10 minutes with their patients, you know, as we heard. Um, and so when that happens, you know, there can't physically be that time being spent on that educational component. Um, the other big thing that I've seen thus far in my career is OT is sometimes, if it is in collaboration um, in a, I don't even want to use the word collaboration, if it's in conjunction with physical therapy, it's done so in a completely separate area of a facility. So typically um, us OTs are kind of stuck in a shoebox or in a closet somewhere. Um, there's not too much thought even put into our environment and what we need as therapists um, in order to treat our patients best. Um, and that's just kind of how it is. Um, the patients get their PT, the patients get their OT, 
and that's it. Um, and that's if you're getting that both, both therapies um, at once, because a lot of doctors don't see the value in both rehabs at the same time. Um, so, you know, that's if a patient is lucky enough to either advocate for themselves or if they have a therapist uh, that will advocate for them. Um, and when we are treating the same patient, you know, there's maybe a brief conversation in passing. Oh yeah, did you see so-and-so? Oh yeah, I treated them. But there's not really a whole lot of collaboration going on. Um, and I struggled with that as a clinician for many years because the physical therapists that I were working with, we didn't have the time. Our schedules were not designed to give us that a lot of time to sit down and actually discuss our patient's care together. Um, so sometimes I would be working on an upper extremity injury and the PT would be working on a lower extremity injury. Um, and I wouldn't have any idea really what that patient was going through in their physical therapy. Because again, the way that the facilities were designed, I was in a completely different area. It was impossible for me to see their treatment taking place. I didn't have the time set aside to collaborate with the therapist. We were both very busy. And so we hit a lot of barriers that way. Um, and then when you bring the medical side into it, uh, I can't tell you how many lunches I spent chasing down doctors and trying to get on the phone call and leaving a voicemail for a doctor and then getting a phone call back when I had 10 patients in front of me and I didn't have the opportunity to get to the phone or sending a quick email and not really uh, missing the mark there on what we were trying to convey back and forth to each other. Um, so when, when therapy happens in those kind of silos um, it becomes very difficult to A, give quality care to our patients, um, and B, you're, you're, not, you're gonna see that disconnect where the patients aren't able to reach their, reach their maximum potential, in my opinion. Um, and just as a, a little side there, uh, OTs can treat the whole body, fun fact. <laughs> uh, yes, you will typically see in a lot of patients, uh, do see this where OT does take um, you know, the upper extremity, PT takes everything else, um, but that's just simply not true. Our education is in the entire body um, and you know, we are educated and trained to, to do that. So uh, fun facts. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, that was a great overview and you brought up so many awesome points. Um, uh, gosh, there's, there's a lot there, but you know, you brought up things like um, explaining, just discussing with the patient what's going on. I'm sitting here going, man, how many times have I been a patient that that never happened? But like a lot. I mean, that's common, right? And I think the big thing is, again, thinking as a patient, I don't even know what questions I should be asking. Mm -hmm. So that is such a critical, you know, really perceived value from my end. I said, gosh, as you explain to me what you're doing, why you're doing it, what's going on, what my options are, all of this from even what with Dr. Pachilla described in that initial consult all the way through that, that continued communication all the way through, whether it be PT or OT or other providers, medical providers who are all aware of my case and what's going on and who are communicating and collaborating behind the scenes so that I, I, as I'm communicated with, I have a much higher level of understanding of what's being done, why, uh, why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing, and you know, again, where's the end? What 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 are the goals? You know, and what, what's my life look like um, moving forward? Um, so that that's really awesome. And then you mentioned having the time, really taking the time to do that, and I think that's a really important piece, right? Like, time is money, right? And in healthcare. If the lens that, you know, providers or organizations look through is that strictly that financial lens, um, you know, they're not going to take the time to, to, to have all of that discussion and really take the time to explain um, because they could be seeing other patients. And I, I know that you all, um, as well as the rest of the, the providers, one of the values at performance is to look through the lens of patient care and really what's in their that patient's best interest and that that equals time and discussion and, and explanation um and then the last piece that you brought up that i found really interesting is the way the organization structured the way the clinic is structured the way a siloed approach um that's really interesting both i imagine in the physical space as well as things like technology. And, and so I want to, I want to kick it back to Dr. Pachillo before we wrap up and say like, what, you know, practically speaking, what are those things? What are those aspects that, you know, Jessica touched on 
you know, um, that she's experienced in other places where they're just not set up to for collaboration. What does that look like uh, on a daily basis? And, and how, how is it structured? What are the elements of that collaboration? Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's probably really important to highlight that there's there's two parts to that. There's the context is important in any form of communication, but context at, in orthopedic medicine is particularly important in how we deliver that medicine. Uh, the context in which we deliver our treatment significantly impacts patient outcomes. And by the context in which we deliver our treatment, what I'm really referring to is some of what Jess touched on, the physical environment, but mm -hmm. also the non-physical environment, creating an, an encouraging environment. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, the communications we have during that treatment, we are communicating the value behind what we're doing. Because the truth is, if we don't, you're, you're left to figure it out on your own. And sometimes lifting a pink dumbbell or spreading apart a yellow TheraBand, is, it doesn't really scream, I'm healing your rotator cuff tear. Uh, it, it really doesn't. But also setting expectations for patients. Uh, that's also part of the context in which we deliver our, our treatment. So people know not to expect to feel 100% better at visit three or four. Uh, but they do know that feeling 60 or 70% better by the end of their first prescription of 10 or 11 visits, it's a very realistic expectation. Uh, so there, there's that side of it. But then there's also setting up the environment to promote co collaboration among all of the disciplines that we consider part of this rehab team which I know is a, a large part of the reason why traditional physical therapy might not work in comparison to multidisciplinary care, really collaborative care. And we haven't unpacked a, a ton of that just yet. And partially because there's just so much there. Mm -hmm. Right now, at least in 2021, multidisciplinary is, is common. Uh, you, you kind of see it everywhere. There's chiros, PTs, acupuncturists, and sometimes a medical doctor all within a clinic. Uh, but what you find out is it's just that. It's multiple disciplines on, under one roof or in one building. Uh, what Dr. Gazzardi kind of alluded to early on in, the, in, in this webinar is that here at Performance, we work together, uh, yes, under one roof, but also under one game plan as one team and as one unit. And what we've learned is that actually, that promotes better outcomes. That, that will help get patients better faster and I believe also in the long run saves people money because they're going to be going to, to less places. Uh, it is difficult because we do bump up against uh, the preconceived notion that more providers in rehab is bad. I don't want to see 10 providers when I come from my physical therapy. Well, one, I don't blame you. Uh, the, the truth is seeing multiple providers, of uh, multiple rehab providers, so multiple physical therapists, chiropractors, and occupational therapists for the same complaint when they're all operating under different game plans, will keep you in that office longer, spending more money. It, absolutely, it's been proven time and time again. But what's also been proven is when working with multiple rehab providers under one game plan, where they operate as a team, you actually get better quicker than if you were to see the same physical therapist for one hour, three times a week for the, for the next month. Uh, and that's because a game plan from a high level has a, a finite amount of objectives. But in the world of rehab, there's hundreds and hundreds of techniques that could help you achieve those objectives. When you have multiple providers functioning as a unit, working under one game plan as one team, everybody now has the opportunity to highlight their skill set to achieve the objectives we all agreed upon from the beginning. And I really do believe that that's what sets us apart from, from everyone else. And we are passionate about also making sure the physical space that we work in promotes that. Our physical therapist, our occupational therapist, our chiropractors, we are in the same room on the same floor with no walls or dividers up uh, between us. We are working side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so we're not only seeing what each other's doing, we're also able to communicate regularly and on the fly when we need to. And when there's no time to do that because we have a busy day, we make sure that we schedule time every week. Uh, just this past Wednesday. Wednesday seems to be the day we meet at most of our clinic locations, but every Wednesday at one o'clock, every provider across all disciplines, uh, including both uh, medical, physiatry, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, our chiropractors, our acupuncturists, we all gather at a table, sit in a circle, shoulder to shoulder, and we review every patient chart to make sure that everybody's doing exactly what they need to be doing, and we're all on board with the game plan we set out. 
And if we're not, then that's the part where we get to talk and we get to collaborate and we get to uh, really provide insight as to which way we feel might be, be better. And when doing that in the absence of status management, we have great success. Wow, it's amazing. Um, I, I've uh, gotten to see it and I, I've had the opportunity to experience it uh, as, a, as a patient and it's, it's amazing. Um, and I think it, it speaks volumes to um, who not only the three of you are, but you know, all of your, your coworkers are um, just as people because um, you know, uh, we as humans have egos, right? And we, and we tend to, uh, we know what we know and we can get caught up in you know, believing that what, what we know is really the only way or the best way. And so, you know, in all of that collaboration across all of these disciplines and different backgrounds, um, it's amazing to me um, how much um, consensus really can be accomplished. And um, that just requires enormous humility. And um, so I just, yeah, kudos to each of you and um, for committing to that because really the patient wins, right? And, um, I think that's probably the most incredible piece for me. Um, looking in as a non-clinician, I'm like, wow, that's hard for anybody to do. Um, but um, particularly for clinicians working with a particular patient who's sharing that patient, um, that's challenging. That's challenging. And I think it's, it's hard. And that's probably why most practices don't operate that way. It's just hard, right? It's hard work. And um, you guys do a great job at it. So um, I, I'm going to leave it at that uh, just to, for, to really value your time as well as the, uh, those, those watching. But I really enjoyed the conversation. You each, each brought some incredible perspective. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you for your time and for what you do. And uh, we'll have to do it again sometime soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye now.